We're back on the Sports Max Zone. Cricket time now. The West Indies won the first test against Bangladesh at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium over the weekend. The Windies started the fourth day needing just 35 runs for victory. They got there inside the first hour of play. John Campbell led the way with an unbeaten 58, while fellow Jamaican German Blackwood added 26. These are the scores in the match. In Antigua, of course, Bangladesh 103 and 245 in their second innings. The West Indies 265. And although falling to 9 for 3 in their small run chase, in the end made it look easy at 88 for 3. John Campbell there, 58, not out. Kimar Road, 5 for 53 in the first innings, two wickets in the second, it, the two wickets in the first innings, and he ended up with that seven wicket haul and uh, moves up now to 249 wickets in Test cricket. Joined six with Michael Holding on the all time bowlers list for the West Indies. Fazir Mohammed, international commentator, joins us. And uh, Faz, uh, comfortable win in the end for the West Indies, although as they are given to do, it did cause their fans a few anxious moments in the start of their second innings. Yeah, com comfortable enough in the end, as you said correctly, with a margin of seven wickets. But I think when you look inside the overall performances, I think the West Indies would want to look at the batting even in the first innings, 265, but of those 265, 157 came from two players, Craig Bradford and Jermaine Blackwood. And, and as you mentioned, uh, that early slump, uh, uh, losing three wickets for nine runs, uh, it was always going to be nigh impossible uh, for Bangladesh to prevent the West Indies from getting to that 84 on target. But uh, the concerns will be about uh, the, the batting really is developing a level of, of, of assurance and consistency because uh, Bangladesh away from home, as distinct from Bangladesh at home, which was a, a significant achievement for the West Indies early last year to beat Bangladesh in Bangladesh. Well, the Bangladeshis in the Caribbean are really virtual non-entities, and that was borne out again over the last four days. Yeah, a, a lot of comments coming out of the match, and uh, Phil Simmons, the coach, spoke glowingly of Craig Brathwaite's leadership and uh, how he is growing in the job. Uh, your thoughts on Simmons' comments about the captain, Craig Brathwaite? Well, he is growing in the job because he's spending more and more time at, at the helm and it's, it's, it's not an, a, an easy task. There'll be some decisions that many will question, having Raymond Reefer, for example, at number three, and it appears they're going to continue with that in the second test match, which I think is only fair because if someone has been given an opportunity, not because they've had a double failure that you discard them automatically in the same way for Gurdikesh Moti giving the specialist spinner an opportunity, you'd think that he'll be given a chance for the second test matches well so yeah growing in the job but it's, it's a different situation altogether when you're taking on much more formidable opponents the west indies did very well to beat england again uh, the english as you, as you would expect came to came to the caribbean with their usual dose of arrogance leaving out some of their senior players and they paid the price the bangladeshis have come here with some of their senior players clearly not even wanting to play Test cricket because Mustafi Zur had to be persuaded uh, to be part of the Test squad. Shakib Al Hassan has been out of the squad entirely for the better part of a year. Mushfiqur Rahim has taken the opportunity to fulfill some religious obligations. Would he be doing that if the opponents were England, if the opponents were Australia, if the opponents were Pakistan? But to answer your specific question, I think Craig Bradford is. Uh, Certainly, he, his captaincy reflects his demeanor. He's very phlegmatic. Uh, he's not the so, sort of individual to step out of the box too often. He's pretty predictable in what he does. But I think more than anything else, he's prepared to back his players, give them the opportunities, give them the chance to prove themselves. And, and right at the, this moment, they're enjoying uh, themselves at the expense of Bangladesh. Yeah. But Kimar Roach, player of the match, uh, Faz. Um, enjoys apparently playing against Bangladesh, enjoys playing at the Ant in Antigua as well. Uh, your thoughts on his rise up the all-time West Indies wicket-taker standings to join six with Mikey Holding? I think when we look back to six years ago, when Kim Aruch couldn't even get a wicket, he went to Sri Lanka, picked up one wicket in a couple of test matches, went to Australia, went, went wicketless, was left out of the team for the better part uh, of a year and a bit when he came back in for the series in England in 2017. And he had some serious injury problems, so lost a lot of pace. But to come back in the way that he has, 
with the appetite and the discipline and the dedication that he shows. And, and as we see with, with those numbers now, 249 level with, with Michael Holding and with that test match to come in St. Lucia. And if it's a green top, you could probably expect that he might even get close to Joel Garner at 259. I think it's an object lesson for anyone in West Indies cricket, whether batting, bowling, whatever style it is, just to show the value of hard work and persistence. Because Kimar Roach, more than anything else, has shown that even as he's lost a bit of pace, even that he's lost a bit of the, the, the tools that he would have had earlier on in his career, he took 10 wickets in a test match against Australia at Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad in 2012. He roughed up Ricky Ponting in a test match in Perth in 2010. So he was someone with raw pace, that skiddy type of Malcolm Marshall type of pace, but he's made the adjustment and he, he's really showing all around him, Jaden Seals, Azari Joseph, and all the other young cricketers. If you really want to excel in the, the test format, this is what you have to do, this is what you can do. He's not far away from being 54 years of age. Shannon Gabriel is just past 34 and he's struggling to regain form and fitness to get back in a West Indies team. But certainly that is not the case when you're talking about Kim R. Roach. Yeah, Faz, um, a few minutes ago you spoke favorably of uh, Raymond Reefer retaining the number three spot. Now, most people have considered him a, a bowling all-rounder and um, him landing the number three batting spot in this current West Indies team um, was a bit of a surprise for, for a lot of people. So it does appear that not everybody loves Raymond batting at three. I, I, I like how you're going with the sitcom from, from the United States, or Lance Whitaker. Uh, but um, the, 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 I'm only saying it in the interest of fairness. I was actually surprised that he was put at number three. But I don't think it's fair to just simply put someone at number three. He's only played a couple of test matches. And again, we need to, to put these things in context. His first test match was at the end of 2017, when the West Indies were being demolished in New Zealand and he only played uh, because Jason Holder had to serve a one match suspension because of some penalty points. It's interesting that Holder has opted out of this series and Raymond Reefer gets an opportunity again. He's batted at number three for the Barbados Pride. They are the regional champions. He had a good season. So in the interest of fairness, not because I believe he is the automatic number three for the West Indies, in the interest of fairness, he should be given another opportunity in that second test match. Fazir, you know, boy, this is another part of the reason why we love to hear you because you, you, you hit the right notes so often. Raymond Reefer made 11 and 2 in the test match, 11 in the first innings, 2 in the test in the second innings. So when I heard the office talking about Raymond Reefer and it was prompted by something from one of the foremost broadcasters in this region talking about Raymond Reefer and him batting at number 3 and this big issue being created out of it, I'm saying, well, what have our number three batsmen done in recent times? So I just need some quick things. I hope you don't fall asleep. I'll be quick off as there. Bear with me as I lay this out for the benefit of the viewers. I'm just reminding you, but I'm telling some people some things that they probably weren't aware of. In the last 11 test matches that the West Indies would have played since March 21, 2021, 11 test matches from that point till today, we've used five batsmen at number three. Alzari Joseph obviously was used as a night watchman. He made 17. Then Jermaine Blackwood batted once at number three. He made 18. Shea Hope batted there three times for zero for a total of 57 runs at an average of 19. Then Brooks batted there five times for an aggregate of 79 runs, an average of 15.8. And then Kuba Bonner batted there 11 times for an average of 31.27. So Bonner is the usual number three. So we're pretending as if number three has been so bountiful for us in the past. And how dare they put Raymond Reefer there, who can only aggregate 13 in two innings. Listen to Bonner's innings in the 11 tests that he would have played since March 21 last year at number three. 31, 113, naught, 10, naught, 5, 37, 1, 68, 35, and 44. In those five tests, in those 11 tests rather, that we've used five batsmen at number three, the winners have won two, they've drawn four, and they've lost five. Fazir, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. There is no reason to go on this Raymond Reef for hue and cry as if he's the worst number three batsman we've had in recent times because the numbers I've just given to you 
underscores the point. The West Indies, of course, which, which struggle at almost every position. But number three is another position of struggle. And Reefer, 11-2 and two in this test match, he at least deserves another chance because it's not as if those who batted there before him in the last 11 tests did anything special. And, and the reason you have to present those numbers, and the numbers really won't make a difference to those who believe what they want to believe. And that's another thing, that you can present all the data that you want. People will believe what they want to believe, notwithstanding all the evidence of the last 30 years, gentlemen. Many people still talk as if we are still in the era of Greenwich, Haynes and Richards, as your top three. And therefore, anyone else who falls away from that standard is, is nowhere should they be even considered near a West Indies team. It's, we live in this fantasy world and, and then express shock and dismay when we lose to teams like Bangladesh or when we are throttled by South Africa in St. Lucia as we were last year in, in those two test matches as, as if our top order batsmen have, have never faced quality short fast pitch bowling in their entire lives. And, and again, we're going to be exposed later on this year when we go down to Australia. So it, it's a sort of point, I understand the point that you're making, George, because I know you're a man hard on statistics and data and numbers and so on. But it's kind of pointless when people are determined to believe what they want to believe, never mind all the hard data. Many will still believe that the next West Indies, number three, who walks out there should be Master George. But, but it might be George Davis, but it won't be George Headley. But the, the, the fact of the matter is the performances and the quality just isn't there at, at this particular point in time. Absolutely right. And Lance, the other thing to make, which is why I, I took the time to do this, mm -hmm. the 11 innings that Bonner would have played at number three, in five of those 11 innings, he made less than five runs. So I'm just saying, I'm not saying Raymond Reefer is the answer. None of us who are sensible about cricket are saying that. What we are saying is that the criticism of the young man after what happened in the first test mm. is almost but, dumps. Yeah, but, but to be fair, George, of, a lot of people yes. criticized the decision before he even batted. No, but based on his based yes, on his yeah, track record, yeah. people don't see him as a number three batsman but Lance, for test cricket. The numbers ask the question, mm. who of those that we've used at number three is a number three class test well, batsman? Well, that's where West Indies cricket is. So and I, that's the point I, we're that, making. Yeah, well, I understand that yes. because our, our cricket is so unsuccessful and unproductive at the moment that um, it is hard to, to with, with conviction, you know, name a number three batsman in West Indies cricket at the moment. I just think that the point was made and the feeling was, was advertised even before... Uh, Marifa had performed because his track record doesn't doesn't suggest that he is the best choice for a number three uh, batsman in a test match for the West Indies. Well, international cricket, because could, and, West Indies standards are quite different. And I could digest that again if we had somebody who was there setting standards and yes. that Raymond Reefer, the declaration of Raymond Reefer in that position was an affront to the person who held that position before and we were on a hiding to nothing. But the numbers never, never lie. And like so many positions in the West Indies batting order, yeah. three is a problem, has been a problem, and perhaps will be a problem. Yes, that's where our cricket is. Faz, we're going to leave it there. Enjoy the rest of your Labor Day holiday in sweet, sweet TNT, brother. And thank you very much for reminding me of the horse racing results because it's just a few miles away from me and I have the clue. Yeah, affirmative, winning, winning the President's Cup. You, you'll hear more about it on At The Track, which I know is one of your favorite shows. <laughs> Don't ever miss it. <laughs> All right, Faz. <laughs> uh, regular arguments with Faz about what is the sport of kings. He says cricket is the king of sport, so I can talk all but, I want about horse racing being the sport you, of kings. You, you're going to the prompt, Lance, but yeah. here's the thing. Listen, yeah. the numbers here should make people ashamed of what they've been saying about the young man. Yeah. It, it doesn't add up. Calm. Still to come on today's show, Trinidad and Tobago's Dylan Carter impressing at the FINA World Swing Championship in Budapest. We'll get a perspective from a former coach later in the show. We'll also talk about Shelley Ann Fraser Price, the Jamaican sprint queen who continues to break records at age 35. Now, will local fans get the chance to see her over 100 meters at the Jamaican trials this week? Late Levy will be with us for that discussion. Thank you for watching Sportsmax on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell to stay informed.